What's going on everybody, Respawn Gentleman here. So today I'm going to show you how you can become completely overpowered before even starting this story. Let's get right to it. So as you can see on the screen, I'm a level 1 character. I haven't discovered like hardly anything on the map. And I'm still at the very first mission of the game. I've only completed the three prologue missions. Um, so very, very, very beginning of the game. So basically the way that this works is we're going to be getting over to the central loop before we do anything in the story and we're going to head over to this area down here and do the infinite max level farming loop which is absolutely insane especially if you can get here uh very early in the game so that's basically what we're going to do and uh i'm going to show you some inhibitor locations and different skills and things you're going to need in order to make that happen the very first location we're going to be is actually very very close to where you start uh the open world exploration you can see right there in front of me where those kind of yellow uh, bars are. That's actually where you start the game. So you just hop over to that building and you want to come over here. I'll show you on the map where we are. So it's right here. So you can see you start right here at this part. And this is where you're trying to go. You don't have to activate the Night Runner's hideout. But I like to just because it's helpful. But what we're going for is this big green container right here. So as soon as you get over here, you can open this up. And there's going to be a inhibitor chest inside. Go ahead and drop down there. Um, what's great about this is whenever you get here, there's also a military med kit, immunity booster, and there should be some sort of um, artifact weapon. So far, I've seen it always be a hammer the first time you go here, um, but it could be different for you. But all you need to do is open up the chest and get the inhibitor inside. So for the next inhibitor chest, we're actually going to be heading over to this building here. Um, so if you're leaving from that first one, you'll just head straight south and you'll run into the metro. Kind of like right here. This is where the metro is. You just want to head over to the left side. And we're looking for this big building right over here. So let's go run inside real quick and I'll show you exactly where the inhibitor is. Once you're inside the building, just head over here to the right. And jump through this little fence. And the inhibitor is inside the safe. If you want the safe code, it's actually inside the Night Runner hideout inside of a little uh, kickable chest. But the code is actually going to be 101. So let me go ahead and open this up and collect the inhibitor. All right, so you can see, like I said, it's 101. Put it up. And then here's the inhibitor inside the safe. So for the next inhibitor, you actually just want to head straight south again from where you just were for that previous inhibitor I mentioned. And uh, you actually want to come to this area. If you're familiar with the um, quest that talks, that kind of leads you to this area, it's like a history lesson quest. Um, is right next to where that ends you want to come to this little subway station and you want to go down inside now there's a few zombies in here but you don't need to worry about them just kind of stick over to the left here up on top of the container and then go and open this up and like i said the zombies won't bother you in here so just make sure you grab the immunity booster and the inhibitor as well so the next inhibitor chest is actually right over here i'm gonna show you on the map um we're right next to where the electrical station is and you actually, again, just head straight south from where you were. And when you get over here, you'll kind of need to get through the chemicals and into the water. And then the chest is actually right over here next to this little barrel. Kind of see it underwater there. Go we'll collect the chest. And again, when you open this up, make sure you get the immunity booster as well as the inhibitors. So the next place you want to go actually is going to be this GRE anomaly. However, chances are it's not nighttime yet for you. So what I like to do before doing that is opening up the oak windmill. So make sure you go here, uh, activate that, and then rest until nighttime. And then I will show you what to do when you get to the GRE anomaly. So on the map where the anomaly is, you can actually see it's almost directly east of the last inhibitor chest we got. And it's uh, almost directly south from the oak windmill. So this is where we're going is right here. Um, if you run by this area, you'll see it on your map. You can see there's the anomaly right there, so let's jump down there and go get him. Now, I'm not going to cut this fight out. I'm going to show you the whole thing just to show you how easy it is to defeat him, especially with using just the hammer that I got earlier. Let me run up here and then just start wailing on him. Of course, sometimes he'll do that or he'll just run away before you even get to him. But most of the time, he won't even attack you. Like It's insane how quickly you can do damage to him. Now, you can get hit. Sometimes he'll swing his uh, arms around and he'll hit you that way. Or if you're far enough away, he'll throw like a, 
exploding blast at you. Either way, just keep smacking him, and uh, eventually you will kill him. Just like that, see how quickly it was. And then all you need to do is follow kind of the marker, which leads you to the top of this container. And you'll just hop down inside, go kind of similar to the other Jerry container we were at, and then grab this inhibitor chest. The next inhibitor chest location is actually going to be right here at the large windmill. So if you have completed the GRA anomaly like I did, then basically just go straight north. You'll run into the large windmill. You can activate this one right now or you can do it later, but I would highly recommend activating it. But basically you can see there's the windmill right here in front of me. I am on the um, kind of to the northwest of it a little bit. You can kind of see right here. And all you want to do is go down here and the chest is right here um there sometimes is a zombie right here so if there is take him down otherwise it'll cause problems um but like this time it didn't happen to spawn so he's perfectly fine so from the large windmill you want to head kind of northeast over to the maple windmill you want to activate that because it's right in between two places that we need to go next the first place we're going is actually going to be this uh thv genomic center or i just call it a quarantine building um, this is actually super easy to get to. Um, you can see it right here from the Maple Windmill. And uh, I'll get to the top of the building. And then I will show you... Well, actually, I'll show you how to get to the top of the building. Then I'll show you what you need to do once you get inside. So once you get to the building, um, if you have enough stamina, which I haven't used any of the inhibitors that I've gotten yet, so I still only have 100 stamina. Um, if you have higher than that, you can climb to the top through this little billboard. If you don't, then you'll need to come over here to the side, which on the map you can see here, kind of where I am, on the western side of the building, kind of uh, right here. And you want to jump onto this little blue thing here, and uh, hopefully don't fall to the ground. <laughs> and then you want to jump right up here. So we're just going to follow the path that I take up this way. Um, it's super easy to do, even with 100 stamina, so you don't even need to worry about falling. And uh, we'll get to the top. Okay, so now that you made it to the top, you just want to work your way around the building and don't run into poles like that. <laughs> uh, but you want to go to this door here and open it up with your GRE key. Now, once inside, um, there's going to be very little fighting that you have to do, um, if at all. It just kind of depends on how you go about it. So you'll go down the stairs and you'll get to this first door. Let's go ahead and open this up. This first area, you don't need to do any fighting at all. It's super easy to get through. Um, just avoid the zombies, which they're spread out far enough where you don't have to worry about running into them. What we're looking for is the other side. You want to go to the other side of this door. But going that way, you're going to run into some zombies that are probably going to wake up. It's going to cause problems. So you want to come over here to the side and go through this little hole. Because this guy right here oh, is going to cause a problem. Because he's right next to the door you need to open. So you definitely want to take him out. All the rest of the zombies are useless. So go ahead and pick the lock. And once you've done that, you can go inside and open up the chest and grab the um, immunity booster and the inhibitor inside. Now, after you've grabbed that, just keep following the path that I'm taking. Again, most of these zombies won't even worry about you. Perfectly fine. Let's go open up this elevator and then drop down to the next level. Okay, so once you get to this door, which is directly from the elevator... You'll need to go inside there, but this one does have a zombie that's roaming around everywhere. So you've got two options to kind of handle this. You can either um, try to sneak behind him and take him down, or go punch him in the face and uh, kill all the zombies. I have always had a hard time uh, sneaking up behind him, so I choose to take all the zombies out. So let me cut to whenever I kill all of them. Alright, so that's most of the zombies dead. There's a couple over there that didn't wake up for some reason. And that guy didn't come over here, so that's perfectly fine. Um, you'll notice my immunity is low, which is why we've been picking up the immunity boosters. So just use one of those, and it instantly refills it, so they're super, super useful. You want to come over to this door and lockpick it, just like last time. And then once you're inside, you will just open up this chest, grab another immunity booster, and the inhibitor inside. Alright, so after that, again, just follow the path that I'm taking. There'll be a zombie in here because I didn't kill him before. So I'm just going to go ahead and kill him real quick. Just because, you know, he exists. There's a few here, but you can actually run past them. 
All we're needing to do is go down these stairs here. The zombies will not come down the stairs to get you, or at least you'll be gone before the time they even get over here anyway. It doesn't even matter, you just run past them. So, get inside this room, and then um, I'll show you where to go. So, I've noticed this, that occasionally a howler will spawn in here, and basically he's kind of right next to where you need to go for the inhibitor chest. So, the way you want to do this is wait, if he's there, wait till he starts walking away, and then you want to go around and sneak up behind him so that way he doesn't cause any problems because he will wake all these zombies up and you'll have a bad day <laughs> you just have to kill them all i mean it's, it's not hard they're super easy but most of the time you can just sneak over there and then you want to come to this door here and lock pick it just like before and then once inside you'll open up this one this will be the final two inhibitors for this particular building i'll go ahead and grab that plus the immunity booster and then to leave, you'll actually just head through the doors that are right next to where you just got the chest and then come out here and you'll be outside. Now, there will be a couple of howlers out here. I'm going to show you the best way that I like to go to avoid them is just run straight over here and just jump up here. Most of the time, I have not seen the howlers um, kind of activate at all, so you can avoid that entirely. So once you've completed that, we're actually going to head over to this Jiri Anomaly here. Now, if it's still early enough in the night, which for me it is, I have plenty of time to get over there and take care of the anomaly, um, then you can just head straight there. If there's not enough time for you, then head back to the Maple Windmill, reset the night, and then uh, go to the anomaly, and I'll show you where that is. So on the map, the GRE anomaly, if you haven't discovered the location, is actually kind of right here. Um, the easiest way to see it is this kind of horizontal line, or this line, I guess, right here between uh, Trinity and Horseshoe and it's kind of right smack dab in the middle and it's just a little bit northwest of uh, the Maple Windmill that we activated earlier. So again I'm not going to cut this out, we're going to go over here, smack this guy around a little bit just to show you how easily you can get rid of this dude. It's super super easy. They made it uh, seem like these anomalies were going to be, you know, this tough you know challenge that you're like oh man this is gonna be super hard but um no it's not <laughs> they barely do anything at all because most of the time you can get over to them before they even try to do any damage to you all right now occasionally you'll get some virals um take them out because they're super annoying and they will run up here with you but once you've killed him um you can collect the stuff from him he'll usually give like a artifact consumable or not consumable uh, valuable that you could sell and then uh, usually like either a rare or unique trophy I've noticed but you want to go inside this container and again open up another GRE chest so for the next inhibitor you want to go from the GRE anomaly over to this area where I'm at right here um, if you go ahead and activate the willow windmill you can kind of use that at reference point but this is where you want to head it's just basically straight northeast from the Jerry Anomaly, it's super, super close. Um, you can see the uh, Willow Windmill right there. And then um, when I wanna get to this ledge, like again, I'll show you on the map, kind of zoom in this particular spot. And you wanna go inside here. Now there's gonna be lots and lots of zombies, um, especially some virals. So in here, you, you're you gonna wanna kill all of them, at least on this first floor. Um, it's not gonna be too hard because there's only a couple of virals. And then, uh, so I'm going to skip forward to after I've gotten rid of all of them, and I'll show you where to go after that. All right, so once you've killed all of them, you want to come over to the end of the room, which is over here. And then you want to go right in here. Um, this zombie doesn't matter. I'm going to take him down just because I feel like it. <laughs> but all you're needing to do, actually, is just jump up here, and then jump up here. And there's a few zombies here, so you might need to take them out. So I'm going to do this. It may not cause any more zombies to show up, but if it does, take them out. Once they're done, then just go ahead and open up this chest and grab the next inhibitor. So the next inhibitor you want to get is actually going to be right over here, um, north of the Alder Windmill, which you do want to activate because that's going to be super important coming up in just a minute. But you want to head kind of over to where I am. Um, so here's the windmill. There's a Forsaken store that's right here. Um, but you can see it's this little chicken pie building right next to the Forsaken store. And you want to go into these windows. There's multiple ways to get in there. Um, you can climb up the pipe. You can jump across. You can kind of do it however you want to do it. But you want to get over to that window. So let me jump over there. Here. 
And then once we're inside, there's a couple of zombies in here. The only one you really need to worry about is this guy right here. Because he's directly in front of the chest. You can't access it without, you know, waking him up. So the other two zombies right here, you can take them out if you want to, but it's not necessary. You just go ahead and open up this chest here. And then grab the final immunity booster that you need. I mean, and then also the inhibitor as well. So now before we continue on with the next step before moving on to what actually needs to happen, so you can see here I have six upgrades available and you want to put all of them into your stamina. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then show you what skills you need to choose. So by putting them all into your stamina, you'll now have 220 stamina, which is key for this. You'll actually need 240 total. Um, but the first thing you want to do, you should, if you haven't spent any of your points yet, should have... Uh, still the one parkour point that you've received just from going through this little section you want to activate the far jump ability because this is what you're going to need in order to get the rest of your skill points so you can see right here i'm a level one character still um, all i need to do is level up my parkour three times and that'll give me enough points to get the tic tac the wall run and the wall run jump those are super important to get this completed so um that's kind of why I had you go back to the Alder Windmill. So let me go back to nighttime and show you what you need to do for that. All right, so once it's nighttime, we're going to be doing the uh, XP exploit or parkour. Super, super easy to do. If you're not familiar with it, I do have a guide on it linked in the description below. Um, so you can go check that out if you want to get kind of more specifics. But basically, all we're going to do is we're going to use our far jump ability as well as a chase to get our experience up as quickly as possible and we'll do this until we reach uh three levels of parkour it shouldn't take too long um i've noticed sometimes it takes me about half a night sometimes it takes me like just three cycles of going back to the safe house and coming back so it really just depends um, but this is what the far jump ability is for so make sure you have that ability so once you've leveled up three times, you'll actually be a level two character, which will bump up your stamina to 240. You'll have your three parkour points. Let's go ahead and put them into the Tic Tac ability, and then the wall run ability, as well as the wall run jump ability. So now we're going to head over to the other side of the map since we have the skills we need to do this. And uh, basically where we're going to be going is the very bottom of the uh, old Villador map, so right here, kind of at the point Corey's end that's where we're going to go so I'm going to head over there and show you what you need to do when you get there so once you've reached kind of near the GRE anomaly that we went to first as well as near the uh, Corey and swimming pool doesn't really matter where you do this from um, just follow the path that I'm taking here uh, this is going to be the easiest way to get through this area because there's a lot of chemicals and a lot of zombies so you want to avoid all of them but just follow where I go So once you've reached the end of this little bridge here and reached this wall, you'll head over to the right and uh, kind of by this tree here, there's some ledges you want to jump on. Let's go ahead and jump up here and then up to the next one. And then this is where we're going right here. So there is a story mission that does take you to this area, but the whole point of this is to do this before you do any story missions. So that's why we're going here now. So just keep following what I'm doing here. Now I will mention that there is a way to glitch yourself over there um by kind of making yourself immune to the chemicals however i'm not going to show that particular method for a couple of reasons one is because i personally have never been able to get it to work i have tried so many times and no matter what i can't get it to work i know other people can and if you can great do that um but i personally can't so um that's why i do it this way the other reason for doing it this way is because if that chemical glitch gets patched which it most likely will, um, then you'll need to use this method in order to get over to the other side of the map. So once you're inside this little area, you want to go all the way to the end over here, and we're going to jump up this wall. So there's some little blue um, like poles or whatever this is. You can jump on top of here. And then using the abilities we just got, you just want to jump right up here on top of the wall. And then over here, there is a car right below you. You kind of want to line yourself up with that and then jump up on top of the wall and over and land on the car. That way you avoid most damage. So if you've completed the story or at least gotten through 
normally to the central loop. This area is completely familiar to you. Um, but if you haven't, just follow the path that I'm taking and it'll lead you exactly where you need to go. All right, so now that you're at the car factory, um, you actually don't need to go over there at all. Um, there's some story stuff that happens there, so if you haven't completed the story or gone through it, I'm not going to spoil it. But what you want to do is head over to this wall. You want to run on top of the wall to this little gate here, and then jump over the gate, and then you'll be on this side. So get out of the chemicals as quickly as possible so you don't have to worry about that. Now, there is a couple of ways you can do this. If you're not comfortable with using the far jump to get over there, um, then you, what you can do is run to each of these, uh, kind of broadcast poles or, you know, whatever they happen to be and just run straight to them and climb up several rungs. You'll see that the immunity kind of kicks in and you'll no longer be affected by the chemicals. And then you can just go from, uh, kind of hold the pole and get over there that way. But I find it a little bit easier to use the far jump. So just kind of, if you're going to be using that, just kind of do what I'm doing here. So we'll jump over this one. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Do that again. Make sure you actually activate the far jump. Otherwise, you will not get this to work. So I'll activate this one. And we're almost there. It's really close. And there we go. So you should get over here without dying. But again, if you're not comfortable with doing that, jump on the poles, climb up a little bit, and the chemicals will stop affecting you. So once you're over here, you actually want to jump in the water and go this direction. If you jump in the water over here, it's full of chemicals and you'll die. And if you go that way, um, you'll have to jump in the water anyway. So it's just easier to jump in the water now. So what you're going to do when you get in the water is you're actually going to go all the way down. Just follow the water all the way down to the dam. And I'll show you where you need to go after that. All right. So once you've reached the dam, you want to come over here to the right side and jump up this little uh, ledge here. And you want to go up these stairs. Now, one thing I will mention, there are a couple of safe houses in this area, and I would highly recommend not doing them. Do not activate them. I'm going to tell you why. So, we go over here to the map, and you can see, like, there's uh, there's a safe house that's about right here-ish, and then there's another one that's somewhere around this area. So, the reason why you don't want to activate that is because the only way to get back to the other side of the map is to die and if these safe houses are here you will when you die you'll actually respawn back to those rather than getting back to the other side of the map now i have gotten it to work where i can still get back to the side of the map but most of the time you'll just respawn inside of the safe houses here so do not activate them at all so now that we're over here we're actually going to head straight over here to about right here on the map um so kind of right below newfound lost lands and you can kind of see the, the sketch marks of this area. If you're familiar with the infinite max level uh, legendary farm loop thing, um, I have a video on that in the description below. But if you're familiar with it, that's where we're going. So I'm going to show you exactly how to get there from here. So just follow the path that I'm taking and you can get there really, really easily. All right, so now that we've made it over here, we're actually going to head over to this safe house. Now, unlike the previous two that I mentioned, this one's perfectly fine to activate because it's far enough away that whenever you die to get back over to the other side, it won't send you back here. It'll send you exactly where you need to go. I would highly recommend activating it, especially if you uh, do the full loop, um, which, again, check out the guide in the description below. It tells you exactly how to do the loop. So, um, basically, what I'm going to do just to kind of show some of it right now is as soon as you activate it there's a um like a parachute kind of right off the bridge 
you'll get this question mark on the ground and that is where one of the sunken airdrops is now this is going to be a very hard chest to open and um i'm actually going to be having a lock picking guide coming out very soon so if you're interested in that um i can give that you'll be able to see that soon uh, but all you need to do is pick this lock so this one in particular i've noticed is more often than not will give a uh weapon i'm gonna go here get some air because it took me a little bit too long to uh do that one but a lot of times this one will have weapons in it and this one is one of the ones that gives you a level 9 weapon basically every single time so you can see here i just got a level 9 weapon let's hop over there and it does 324 damage this is the chop chop machete um it's absolutely insane you will be able to one shot every enemy in the entire game with these weapons it's absolutely crazy so make sure you go through the full loop so you can get tons of weapons and gear and just be completely just ridiculous before even doing any of the story the one thing i do want to say is that once you're over here you can actually explore every single bit of the central loop you can go activate safe houses activate windmills um, basically anything that does not require electricity or um, the paraglider or grappling hook you can do 100 percent with no problems it's absolutely crazy um, there's actually a water tower in muddy grounds that you can actually activate and go ahead and have that assigned to either the survivors or the pks um, so you can do that one um, but yeah it's absolutely crazy you can activate all sorts of stuff over here and it's super cool also while you're over here um, when you're up on high buildings and you want to get down the best way to do that is make sure there is a some kind of car or vehicle below the building you want to land on top of the car because no matter how high you jump from even if you're jumping from the vnc building if there is a car below you and you land on it you will not die it's absolutely insane so make sure that when you're trying to explore this area and you want to get off high buildings then land on vehicles so in order to get back to you old villador so you can actually progress the story and you're not stuck over here forever um you want to make your way back to the dam you can just go back the way you came if you're over here doing the loop um there's multiple ways to get back here but basically make your way back to the dam so there's a lot of chemicals in this area that should teleport you all the way over there um, but depending on the safe houses you activated it may still be a bit too close so I like to head all the way back to the bridge so I'll show you what to do when you get back to the bridge so once you swam back to the bridge you want to head over to this side kind of where those um, antenna pole thingies were that we used earlier so you want to just jump up here to this ledge and then jump up here to this one and then you want to kind of get up here so you're out of the chemicals um, again this area can potentially send you back to uh, old villador but it can also send you to um, the central loop so just all you want to do is head back to kind of this area and you should be able to get over here before dying and uh yeah all good <laughs> but whenever you get over here you want to hop back over this little fence uh this little white fence right here and this will actually lead you to what i find is the most um most of the time will actually get you back over there so you can just hop over here and die and i'm not going to cut this part out just so you can see it so here i am dying and we'll wait for the death screen to pop up now when it does pop up you only want to choose respawn don't click restart at last story point um, because there is a chance that it could get rid of the stuff you just collected and that's no fun for anybody so just hit respawn and waiting for the loading to happen and here i'm loaded in and let's check the map and you can see now i am back in quarry's end and let's go over to my inventory and you can see i still have my level 9 weapon and again like i said if you've done the loop multiple times you'll have way more than just the one but it's absolutely insane so let me go show you just kind of what a level 9 weapon can do to the enemies just in the game um so let's go find some zombies real quick and here's the zombie down here let's go get him so here we are and dead it's literally one shots everything the only things that might give you some trouble or take more than one hit are going to be goons and demolishers everything else is going to take about one hit and that's it including peacekeepers um <laughs> whoops <laughs> but 
Yeah, it's absolutely insane. Even the throwing spears do considerably less damage than the weapons that you will have at your disposal. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more Dying Light content, make sure to like and subscribe. You can also check out some of my other videos like the one YouTube recommends right over there. And if you want to help support this channel, you can check out the support links in the description below. Thanks for watching.